If you are under the age of, say, 25, it's difficult to imagine there was a time not so long ago when you did not have access at the touch of a button to centuries worth of recorded music. Portable music used to be all Walkman and cassette tapes, but that changed in 2001 when Apple introduced something called the iPod, which now officially is set to become a relic of history. In our Sunday Spotlight, Gotti Schwartz says goodbye to the device that changed the way we listen to music. There it is, right there. The year was 2001. Britney and Justin twinning in denim, Beyonce still one-third of Destiny's Child, and music was mostly listened to on plastic. Until this amazing little device holds a thousand songs, and it goes right in my pocket. The iPod revolutionized the way the world listened to music. You could pick what you wanted on the fly. Wired editor-at-large Stephen Levy wrote the book on iPod, literally. Just the idea that you could walk around with a pair of earphones and create your own soundtrack for the world. The portable music player first hit the market without its online music marketplace, contributing to another growing phenomenon, piracy. Music lovers could download their CDs onto an iPod or other MP3 player, but many were ripping their music for free from sites like Napster. Because of that, not everyone in the music industry embraced iPod at first, until the iTunes store offered a legitimate way to profit off digital music. It helped actually revitalize the music industry. The music industry now is selling music at levels as it did before Napster, before piracy. Apple wasn't the first MP3 player on the market, but it quickly became the most popular thanks to a sleek, stylish design and hit advertising campaigns, transforming the brand Steve Jobs built from a company known just for its computers to a ubiquitous lifestyle brand peddled by presidents. I got the show. Celebrities. How does the music get in there? <laughs> and music lovers around the globe. Apple's selling an estimated 450 million iPods over the last two decades, launching seven generations of the original model, plus the mini, the nano, the shuffle, the touch, the iPod video. Whoa, video iPod. Oh, oh wow, geez. Somebody really got carried away with the spirit of Christmas. That was me. People wanted to know what you had on your iPod, and Apple really was on top of that and exploiting it and making sure that iPods got into the hands of celebrities and really was the catalyst for Apple becoming this huge company. Despite still selling 3 million units last year, this week Apple finally decided to officially end its iPod era while promising its revolutionary Mac DNA will live on in our phones. One great thing about Steve Jobs was he wasn't afraid to cannibalize his own products to move things forward. So you can sort of see the writing on the wall when the iPod is integrated into the iPhone. Which means the once groundbreaking tech goes the way of the record player, the A-Track, the Walkman, something you'll have to explain to your kids. But you can take comfort in knowing that shuffle you found in the back of your closet that is now a collectible. And that is music to my ears, if you can find an adapter. For Sunday Today, Gotti Schwartz, NBC News, Los Angeles. I still have a couple of those tucked away in a drawer somewhere. Gotti, thank you very much. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.